All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vonder, and welcome to another exciting episode of Piracy Log. All right, we got a lot of stuff on tap today, so let's dig right in. You can see our topics for the day up here. Chat GPT, all right, so everybody's excited about this new AI technology. I'm excited about it, it's really cool. But for lawyers, it's not quite ready yet. Alert, attention, caution, it's not quite ready yet. So don't be doing your legal research on Chat GTP thinking you're gonna get it all figured out and you're gonna whip out a, a, a masterful brief in about five minutes, it's not gonna happen. Problem is, the case law is not quite right. Sometimes it will make up fictitious cases. There was a case where, two cases actually, that have popped in. One where a lawyer used ChatGPT to write a motion. Maybe it was last minute and he goes, oh my God, I got a motion to put together ChatGPT, how to win a summary judgment on a trade secret theft case. DDD, boom, go. Oh, it cited all these wonderful cases. Turns out the cases weren't real. The federal judge found out this guy's uh, in big trouble now. Um, it, uh, I knew these cases were going to happen. That was one. There was also a guy who used ChatGPT in a criminal case. Okay, somebody's freedom's on the line. He used ChatGPT for the closing argument. Somehow got it all screwed up. Now a, a new firm is in there trying to clean up the mess, saying it was ineffective counsel, trying to get a new trial, ineffective counsel. So guys, AI, chat GPT, good stuff, not ready for prime time, my opinion, but there is great promise in this. All right. Moving on, DISH. We're talking about DISH networks, Sling TV. Our firm has, handles a lot of these cases. This is where you're selling basically pirate TV, okay? You're selling credits where somebody can come in and get for $20 a month, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 channels, TVs, movies, sports, everything, music. And um, you can get a letter. These They are out there looking for you. They're looking for penalties. They're looking for big settlements, okay? We deal with these cases now. If you get a letter and you ignore it, just realize um, they do file lawsuits. I have one right here in my hand. And they're not pretty because they're going to be seeking a lot of money for you. So if, you're, if you get one of these letters, you have a chance to settle. We help a lot of clients settle these cases. But if you don't, if you say, you know, let's just wait and see what happens, this could be what happens. Not fun. Okay. Next, moving on, GNR, Guns N' Roses, all right. So Guns N' Roses is trying, now this is not just Guns N' Roses, a lot of bands out there, a lot of companies with their t-shirts, okay? They say Rolling Stones or GNR, Metallica, The Doors, I love The Doors. Um, but these things, you get them done on a print-on-demand company, could get you into, pro in, into legal trouble. So you need to be careful. In one such case, Guns N' Roses hired legal counsel to go after the bootleggers, okay? They went in and filed a lawsuit right before for the concert so that they could get an injunction in hand to go and stop some of these bootleggers selling their t-shirts at the concert. You've seen them at the baseball games and the sporting goods things. Somebody just trying to make a buck, give me a give me a break, right? Like big deal, right? But it's somebody's intellectual property on the other hand. If you're selling it, somebody can come and try to get you busted, try to sue you for trademark infringement, maybe counterfeits, that, that sort of thing. So be careful. Um, this is bootleg merch and and uh, apparently they're just trying to, um, I guess they're alleging that the the infringers are slashing into their sales, if you will. Would have been nice if they would just had a little more patience and just live and let die, live and let die. Have a little sympathy for the devil, if you will. Anyway, there are stiff penalties for copyrights, uh, for, excuse me, copyright. These designs are typically copyrighted because they're creative designs. You know, the Guns N' Roses has the two guns pointing with the rose. So that's a copyright, but Guns N' Roses is also a trademark, okay? And if you're using trademarks on T-shirts, Guns N' Roses has a trademark for T-shirts with the, with the slogan. Could be deemed, somebody could seek out counterfeit penalties, which can go up to $2 million. It's like not very fun. Anyway, that's GNR. Be careful selling your, your shirts and your memorabilia, your hats patches, your labels, your stickers, whatever it is that you're going to sell. Be very careful. They can be out to get you, okay? Um, next, what do we have? BSA, the Business Software Alliance. So our firm used to do a ton of these Business Software Alliance audits. They were audits brought by the Business Software Alliance that represented companies like Microsoft. The big one was Microsoft. 
And um, companies like Adobe, um, Autodesk was also in there, and, and many others. But those were some of the main ones that we would always see. Well, they disappeared about three, four years ago. I have heard neither hide nor hear from them, nor their attorneys. So I kind of was fishing around going, what's happened? That's kind of weird. They just disappeared. They had this thing going. Um, then I find out that they're building this, at least they're... Uh, according to the internet, if you can believe that. But anyway, I see that they're building some sort of Ethereum blockchain use case, some kind of piracy reporting, anonymous piracy reporting. I did a video on that if you want to check out my YouTube channel, attorneystevevideos.com. Just go to attorneystevevideos.com, type in Argus, A-R-G-U-S in the search bar. So I don't know, maybe uh, piracy reporting will come to the blockchain. Maybe this is a new use case. And I uh, just wanted to keep you posted on the software audit and software piracy. All right, getting down to the wire here. What do we have? Theater, a local theater gets sued for copyright infringement for using musicals. Oh, no, say it isn't so. It was a youth theater in Virginia known as Theater Palooza. And they were just trying to put on some fun shows, this and that. But they were charging for it, charging tickets commercial use of copyrighted content. And musicals can be copyrighted, the choreography and the music and the whole thing. So um, this was an unauthorized performance of musicals. It was many different musicals at issue. One that I took note of was Willy Wonka. I don't know how they did that. I would have liked to seen that. Um, but anyway, this was brought by the Music Theater uh, International. It's a global theatrical licensing agency. They said, you have no license. They brought a federal court in the Eastern District of Virginia, federal court copyright case, Eastern District. And, you know, the judge has to follow the law, even though maybe you feel in your heart, you know, for these people, got hit with a $489,000 damage award. So probably didn't make the profits that they are going to end up paying, and that consisted of 450000 statutory damages, 37000 the winner in a copyright case, gets their attorney fees, and uh, deemed to be willful infringement. So your local theaters, uh, be careful. Be careful if you're going to be producing. One of the rights of a copyright owner is to not only reproduce, but to publicly perform. So if you're doing that, you're in violation of one of the copyright holders' exclusive rights, what we call, they come under the bundle of rights. All right, last but not least, we are talking metaverse. All right, metaverse, uh, Horizon Worlds is meta. That's their world. There's others out there um, that I won't go into, but there's other uh, virtual worlds out there. Um, meta put, which is Facebook meta, they put a lot of money into this Horizons world. So um, new, how's it tie into legal? Courthouse in the cloud. Now we just see for the first time there was a Colombian court which held a hearing in the metaverse. Okay, so you sign up, you get yourself an avatar, and you do you have your speaker, just like I have my microphone here, and you put on your case, you have your hearing, but it's all with avatars. What do you guys think of that? Sound cool, weird, is it the future? Uh, one of the main criticisms of it is that you can't really judge the credibility of a person like you can my face. You can look at my face and go, wow, that guy is super credible. My God, every word he says is, is magical. But with an avatar, with an avatar, you can't do that. It's so the it, one of the criticisms is it's very hard to distinguish if the person is being credible because all you hear is their voice without the facials. Anyway, is this coming to a theater near you? I don't know. Maybe. Um, just going to put that on the on the um, ticket for now. Hey guys, that's it. It's all general legal information. Thanks for watching Piracy Log. And if you like it, make sure to subscribe. Feel free to share this video on your social media networks. Go ahead and help somebody today. And go ahead and put some comments down below if you have anything you want to talk about or anything you want to see on a future show of the Piracy Log. Attorney Steve, I got to run if you need help. Civil litigation on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. Thanks. Got to run. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.